you've been watching the channel for a while, you might remember we started a project. It's been quite a while ago now, but um, it is way beyond time to get back to it. So I bought an awesome Accurite DRO and we kind of got started on the install path and there's been some distractions in life and distractions in the shop that have kind of stalled that project. But I've got a whole lot of money wrapped up in it and I want to be able to use it. So I think it's time to finally bite the bullet and uh, do what's been on my mind a lot but has made me extremely nervous and that is to take this compound and carriage or uh, cross slide apart. The reason it makes me nervous is not because it's overly complicated. It's mostly to do with the fact that I'm afraid of what I might discover. Um, there is a little bit of chunkiness when operating this sometimes, and I'd really be sad to find that there's something that really has to be addressed that is gonna cost me huge money, because if I don't spend huge money with Monarch, it's gonna cost me huge money to get uh, you know gears made or anything like that that is unlikely to be shop reproducible. So anyway, that's been my, my main hang up has just been my, my chickenness. So we're gonna try and fumble our way through this. I have no idea what to expect. I know that um, I've had some, spent some time restoring drawings from Monarch that they were nice enough to send me and they're just really not that helpful. If I, once I'm done with it, I'll, I'll realize, oh yeah, this is exactly what that drawing was trying to show me. But um, at the moment, I really don't, it's really hard to read. So we're just gonna go for it, see what happens. Oh, ball bearings falling on the floor. That's always great. There we go. All right, so we've got this keyed bushing and then a Woodruff key has to come out next. And then this thrust bearing, which is all kinds of nasty. Lots of goop on it. I have a feeling I'm gonna really regret it if I don't set all these parts to the side here in a tray so I can avoid dropping stuff down into the chip pan and then spending the rest of the day searching. So let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. That'll just back itself right off. All right. Yeah. Okay, just grease. Gib screw. Ta-da! Yeah, I don't think I needed to do as much disassembly as I thought, but still figured it would be fun to look at all this stuff and again, clean it. Cause you know, you can see the, the gunk. It's been sitting in there since who knows when. That's what the top of the compound looks like. So we've got our uh, thrust bearing there and a collar and then we've got a bevel gear and then down below it coming up from the cross slide is another bevel gear. How visible that is on the camera. Just see it down there. 
down in the goop. So anyway, you can kind of see some of the high quality restoration that went into this thing. This has all been re-scraped and is, appears to be wear free almost. Only places where you see anything at all are right on the ends where this is just a little bit more dull. Like it's been rubbed a bit. And here you see there's the two grease fittings on the compound. Actually, I think there's a, one on the front too. Um, so this guy is grease lubricated as opposed to oil lubricated. Um, guessing that's because it needs to run tighter in order to power feed in both directions or something. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Someone can make a smarter guess than me on, on that. Make this thing not so slippery. Let's try to hold on to it. But before I feel the weight of it, let me make a guess. I'm gonna say 67 pounds. Make your guess. Put it in the, put it in the comments. Oh, I think I overshot it. That's heavy, but it's not 67. So that'll go back, but not forward. Um, oh no, it'll come up, okay. Cool. So I wonder if we, yeah, put some, I guess we've got to figure out now what needs to come off. Do I need to have this entire thing off before the compound base will come up and off of this? If we just tried to pull up on the, the compound base, I'm guessing, man, how's that gonna work? Cause I don't see how we could pull on that such that it would leave, well, actually, you know what? I think this bearing is cased in a part of the, uh, cross slide, not the compound base. So I think we can probably, if we take off these nuts, we should be able just to lift this thing up and out of here. That's my guess. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. It's a little bit more complicated than your average lathe. Normally you've only got two of these, even on pretty stout machines. probably an orientation that needs to be in, but I have no way of knowing what that is. I might regret this. Swing around to this one. Let each of these guys drop down inside that pocket. Gives me enough room to back these guys off. Okay, cross your fingers. Interesting. Voila, okay. That is cool. Looky there. So when we turn this, take the cross feed out of engagement. We've got our power compound feed rod. Yeah, that is neat. What do now? Okay, so I think what I need to do is right underneath you guys, take off the new uh, cover pan or cover guard, whatever you want to call it that I made. And then um, I'm guessing, I don't know, if we feed the 
cross slide all the way to the back and perhaps it will just unthread off the end of its uh, feed rod or its lead screw. And then we can just slide it off the back of the machine. Let me take off that back guard and then we'll see if this thing can slide off the back of the machine. All right, got the uh, Gibbs screws out on both front and back, way wipers and covers out of the way. So I think what we're gonna do, I can't push this all the way back because of the thin guard that's there. I'd have to take off that whole back assembly and I'd rather not, I may end up there anyway. But I think what we're gonna do is disconnect this, you know, the mounting block that holds this guy in and then the uh, lead screw nut and um, if possible, those will just stay in here and I can just pull the cross slide up and out. That is the theory, we'll see what the practice is. Not sure what's going on there. Almost looks like tape lines in that bronze color is not bronze. That's weird. Get the gib out of there. Is there any movement? Okay, not much. So why don't we take out those other two screws? Okay, let's, oh. Interesting. Those are pins. Well, look at that. Aaron's not such a dummy all the time after all, is he? Actually worked out. So I think what was holding me up at the end there was just these little studs on top of this cover. I have to remember when I get this thing back together that that's probably gonna take some fiddling. If you uh, were here with me and you had ever operated this lathe, you'd know that there's not very much backlash at all in the feed of this machine and you can kind of see it in there. There's just, just ever so slight play back and forth. Well, that's off the machine at least. The uh, trickier part is to get it back on the machine when we need to. But in the meantime, there's some, uh, some work to be done. Um, I'm glad uh, to be at this point so I can get these surfaces all cleaned up and um, get the discoloration off of them. Well guys, we are all cleaned up and the parts are essentially ready to go back on the machine after some greasing and checking. What I wanna do with you guys now is do a little bit of inspection. So as you see, everything cleaned up pretty well. I didn't go crazy on cleaning everything to a mirror shine. I'm not that worried about it. It's immediately going back together and put to work. You can see just how gorgeous the flaking is on the compound ways. It just looks so nice. Whoever did this obviously knew what they were doing. Likewise with the cross slide, it's in very good shape. The flaking marks are all still very present. There's a little bit of weird scratching in a couple of areas, but I'm going to attribute that just to regular wear since this thing has been put to use and the cross slide does get moved a lot more than the compound does. As we look at the scraping on the ways on the carriage, we see that it looks great as well. There's slight wear towards the front where you would expect as that area gets moved all the time. But in general, it still looks really good. All the oil passages are open. The crossfeed nut is in excellent condition. There is hardly any backlash at all. The same goes for the compound feed block and the gears that go in it. Here's the underside of the compound and it is not like anything I've ever seen. 
accommodating these extra bevel gears means it has to have this big boss on it and extra bearings. The grinding marks on the bottom of the compound's top slide look beautiful. I'm not exactly sure why those wouldn't have been scraped in addition to the bottom slide being scraped. But from what I understand, it wouldn't really be necessary if the grinding was good because the lower section would hold the oil and both surfaces would be extremely flat and parallel to one another. It should work perfectly. This lathe is really in pretty good shape. It's far from perfect, but as you can see, it is really, really pretty. Okay, what was your guess? Forty-four pounds. After I picked it up, that's what I figured I would end up at. So what if we take the compound top slide and the compound base, we get 87 pounds. Nice. That's just about 40 kilograms. Told you this thing was beefy.